There was no sitting on the fence because there was actually a war in Newham. Look, I believed in the heavens while standing in hell. Wanted to be a fool just to better myself. When my blood got so bummy for watching that. It was your fault why I'm like this, so, so yeah. I was actually stabbed. I think that was a turning point for me. I felt like if I didn't carry a knife at that point, it was either be killed or be killed. My name is Bread. You good? Move! <laughs> <laughs> My name is S Rose. Yo, yo, trap, trap, mash. Mala trap, all for the souls. Yeah, I'm not lad. Baby, welcome to the party. It was a nice time, like, growing up in Brixton, I would say, even though there was a lot of madness going on. But it's like when you're a kid, it's like you're, you're almost oblivious. Well, I grew up in a neighborhood in Stratford. Um, went to school um, in the area of Plasto, um, gathered many, many friends around that area. Um, but as I journeyed um, into secondary school, that's where things changed a bit. Um, year seven, I was into playing football. Um, I was actually doing athletics as well, competing in things like cross country, um, running and stuff like that. Um, I was into a lot of uh, music at the time as well, because my older brother was part of um, um, a musical kind of group called Twisted Fogs. I had good memories as a kid when I was growing up and, and that's where like my love for football and things like that um, kicked off. But um, yeah, I'd say like my mum, my mum has like a, a, a huge heart for people and she'll always get at me now for, for the things that she sees me do, like living with loads of people, like housing a lot of people. And just before I left my mum's house, I used to have like, there were so many people living in my room at that time that she, just because they didn't have nowhere to stay and I was like their point of cool. We'll go to the studio and we'll just make music. I remember we used to upload a lot of music on MySpace and I remember making a song um, called Our Time. And actually, as we actually grew our, um, our team, we started naming ourselves and we linked up with a school. Um, I went to the school, Lister Community School, and we linked up with Eastley. And they had an um, um, a MC group over there as well, and it was called Delta Gang, Delta Squad, sorry. And then when we linked up with them, we just used to be about um, after school together. We used to roll, there was like 40 of us. We used to go back and forth on the 69 to Stratford. I'm always making mad decisions that affect the whole family that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> flipping, if, if it's not police coming to the door, then it's, it's the press or whatever, or someone knocking on my mum's house or whatever. Or, Stopping my mum or my brothers or something. Spent my first half of my life, like primary school and that, in Brixton. Then I moved to Croydon. Like, um, I moved to a place in Croydon called Norbury. And I moved there because I actually got into a, a secondary school called Trinity School. It was a private school. And I got a sports scholarship to go there. And, like, that was a very big turning point in not only my life, but my family's life. And one day when I came back from football, um, I was actually um, on my way to the bus stop with my little brothers and some of the people from Delta Squad and like 30 people came rushing towards me. I've, I've actually got to tell you about football though because that was actually a big, a massive, 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 massive part in my life because there are times I would, um, like you're missing school because of football, like um, there's things like day release, I play for Crystal Palace, I played for Fulham. I've been on trial everywhere. Uh, um, and then later on, I played for Notts County, and that was my last club. Um, but I got into football properly because, my, because of my older brother. I, I, I always looked up to my older brother, like in regards to like to music and like even like like, like I want to be like him kind of thing. And like, so when he started playing football and, and really taking it seriously, he even opened me up to, to even knowing about like what I started off playing football and I got signed to Crystal Palace in 2008. That's, um, that was like a huge, huge point in my life because like, that's when, I don't think people understand that when a young man 
dedicates himself to football and especially how football is designed, it engulfs your whole life. I first got signed to Crystal Palace. They got, we used to train here three times a week and then play games, play matches at, um, in fact, no, train here two times a week, I think. Then one training se um, session would be in Beckenham. But obviously, I've told, I've told my little brother to, to go and two, two, um, two of my friends stayed behind. But actually, when we stayed behind, that's when it led to me getting stabbed on my, my left arm. Um, so from here to here, but the only reason why I was stabbed is because 30 men approached me from a different area. It was a mistaken uh, identity. It was mistaken by identity. So I think that was a turning point for me. And everybody knew that I got stabbed. Um, everybody in um, Newham was actually, I think a lot of people actually read out for me and stuff like that. But um, I think that was a turning point for me. I, thought, I felt like if I didn't carry a knife at that point, um, it was either be killed or be killed. And I saw what could happen to me. I saw blood gushing out of my arm and from behind my boy's neck, um, right in front of me, I saw there was so much, it was like a blood pool in um, where we was. So at that point I thought, you know what? I'm going to carry a knife myself, not because I want to do anything to anybody, but to protect myself if it came down to that. So I went from playing football to actually carrying a knife. Um, this knife, I'll carry it to, um, to school, I'll carry it to college. So the knife that I was carrying was a kitchen knife from my mum's kitchen. Um, she didn't know that I had it at the time. I used to sneak it into my trousers and stuff like that. But um, I actually carried that knife because I wanted to protect myself. But as I was carrying that knife, I found in my head I was so angry at what happened. I was looking, trying to seek revenge. And because I, I didn't know who the person actually was who actually stabbed me, like it, I just had so many thoughts now and I didn't know how to express myself. So what I started to do, I started chilling with um, the older people in Beckton. I left school at 16. I got good grades and stuff, but I left school at 16. And this is where, like, um, I was, after being, I got um, released from Fulham. I got told that I wasn't going to get another contract at Fulham. I know, but that was just, that was the year of, like, GCSEs and that. Like, you know, after GCSEs, you've got, like, a long, long summer holiday. So, during that time, there's nothing up, football is not on my mind. So, it's like, and... Going, I remember that year, I didn't apply for no colleges because I thought that I was going to get colleges or sixth form because I thought that I was going to get um, my contract at Fulham. So when I found out the news that I wasn't going to get my contract, I was seriously out there. And I think that that summer was like, I remember like I was with my cousin at the time, I won't say his name, but we was just like, it was... It was literally like, even, and this is so mad, even though I went to a good school and all of that stuff, I remember that summer was like the year where I was just like, yeah, like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what I have to do. Some were very, very close to um, everybody in the heart of Newham. The reason why Newham departed, um, I witnessed him getting stabbed um, at a party. And um, I think that at that, at that point, when I walked home, and I feel like, I, I know, because I knew him so well, like, tears, or falling down my face and I was, I was looking to the sky and I was asking God why, like, why did this have to happen? That was the first time I ever saw anybody that like, die in front of my eyes. Like, I just remember like all, like, all till now, I remember his eyes rolling back. And I walked home and tears were falling down my face and I was asking like, God why. And that was somebody that was proper connected with everybody, he was connected with people like the, the crazy titches. Um, he was connected with all areas in Newham and um, he was like, he was a love child in Newham, but at that point, everything changed. Um, like in order to chill with an area, you had to be part of that area. If you if he wasn't part of that area, there was no sitting on the fence because now people there was actually a war in Newham. You couldn't chill with everybody that you used to chill with before, so you had to pick a side. What? I remember walking walking to school on Case the Pot Road. So obviously, I used to live there, straight up ahead. Like that's the flat I used to live on. I walked to school through that road there. I was trying to build my, my like a weed line that didn't work. Like I was actually, I was like, because I feel like, and you're thinking like, why, why would you try and do that? Like me and my me and my cousin. That's like, that was like my, basically like my little brother. Like we used to sleep top and tail. Like I was with him every single day and stuff like that. And I remember um, after the whole summer and stuff in September, my my older brother got a call from 
one of um, my old coaches that he still used to speak to, saying that there's a the Notts County up in Nottingham were looking for um, a winger. He used to play on the wing, and have you like is your brother still playing football? And at the time, I'm not playing football, and football, like I said, was was out of the way, and it's not on, it's not really on my mind. I'm not going college. It's just like. Nah, I'm not. I'm not doing it. So I've spent like four, three, four or five months. I've not even kicked a ball, basically. But he said, "Yeah, like he's ready." Then they get the my old coach basically said to my brother, my older brother. He said, "Yeah, okay, cool. Um, send him up next week. They want to have a look at him." So I went up there for a week. Um, I don't know how I coped, but I done really well. Went up there first game. I, s- I scored a goal, and, and then after that, they signed me. Um, so I was, I think I was, I was 16 and I got signed um, to my f- to my third or fourth professional club. Um, but one thing that was paining me was that I felt like I left a lot of people behind. So like me and my brother and my friends and stuff used to walk down this road from our houses up there in Brixton down to here, which is like two seconds away. And this is where... Like, will come during the summer holidays. And we were very, very equipped from young. So at the age of 15, like, we had access to machines, guns. I come, let's turn up. Come, let's turn up. Man, fool out place. Shoots man down with a burger. Like, ride my bike through this alleyway. Go link my boys from, like, Delta Squad, Swifty, Majestic, and those guys. You know what I'm saying? I used to ride my bike through here. It's like we're behind um, Palastal Station right now. I remember one time, this is where we got in, an altercation with my best friend at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? That we all linked up and I feel like this was like the, the brewing up of Betton and Froskate beefing. We met behind here and stuff like that over a, a little argument on Facebook. And we met up and then obviously everybody went their separate ways and I feel like that day was the day that everything changed kind of, you know what I mean? As I was riding out, I was almost riding out on people that like, I grew up with like people that I used to walk into their houses and the mums would cook me jollof um, with salad cream. And there, was, there was one meal that I can never forget, like the jollof and salad cream from my friend's, friend's mum. But I, I almost vowed in my heart that I will never go to their houses. Like Even though there's a situation going on between us, I will never go to none of their houses. I will never show no one where they live or nothing like that. It will just be a street thing and it will almost be awkward when we meet in the streets. When someone gets, when you get signed, it's like, it's meant to be a happy moment. But for me, it was, it was a happy moment because I'd, I'd worked hard and uh, to get to the point. But it was also a sad one because I knew that there were people that my life really depended on then. It's real, it's real, it's true. Oh, I'm gone. Hey, are you seeing him, yeah? Yeah. Come on. I, I'm gone, you know. He goes now. Yeah, yeah. But when I left, everybody was good. Everybody was cool with each other, like from an area, from even from, from both areas, from, from Croydon or Lambeth or whatever. I mean, let me say, not, not everyone was cool, but nothing had really happened from then. But um, even like when I was up there, my friend dying, loads of, loads of my friends either going to jail or um, getting sentences, and st- um, sentences or dying and stuff. My friend um, Fico, um, Fico Deegan got stabbed to death in 2000 and 2013 and that kind of changed everything where I was from. This is the last place that I actually saw Fico. And right here I was just talking, he was sitting down on a ledge thing here and it's the last place. We are just talking about life, like about what he wanted to do, about his, his goals and I, I was speaking to him because I just came back down from football and he hadn't seen me for a while. I hadn't seen him for a while. It changed the whole, it changed my whole area. It changed my whole area. Like we used to be in, um, like we'd go to like Stormzy's video shoots, sections, video shoots and all of that stuff. And everybody would be together. And everyone would like feel like, I don't know, like there was almost like, there was no madnesses. But when that happened, it's almost like it brought kind of like a, and air and like an airy vibe to my to my area, so like where people used to be, like be out all the time. No one used to be out and stuff like that. And it was just like a lot of animosity where I was from. But the problem was, again, because I was so far 
from everything, I felt powerless. I felt powerless to help. I felt powerless to change things. I felt powerless to even go and check my, my boy's mum to even see if she was all right. I felt powerless because f certain friendships were growing apart with certain people that I knew that if I was dead, that wouldn't have happened because there was just, certain th there was just a lot of things happening at the time. A group of guys came outside my, my mum's house and I just remember my mum phoning me, crying on the phone, and Christian, um, uh, my little brother Christian, um, crying on the phone and telling me, oh, they're here. I'm like, who? And he's like, he, he told me all the names and stuff like that and all the people that was outside my mum's door, there was acts in my mum's door. So then as there was acts in my mum's door, tears was falling on my face. In I, bro, man, it's not scums to be that guy where if something's going on or if there's a situation, if I've got an issue or just regardless of what, if there's a problem in it, you just know that, you know scums is there, innit? That's the scums man know anyway. Like if there's a situation or if man's feeling a way or I need something to be dealt with or in some sort of way, like I just know he's, you know what I mean? That's scums to me. From that day, I said, you know what? Like, from time people can bring it to my mum's house, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Football didn't work out. And I could sit there and I could tell you about loads of times. I've cried over football. Like, <laughs> all life, I've cried. Um, sounds, it sounds stupid now, but at the time when you're in it, it's crazy. I think that even the Premier, the Premier League called me the other day. I was on a Zoom call with them. And um, like they want me to come down and speak to people that have um, like under 16s and 18s that are at the, the turning point of making their decision because they've now realised that it's actually a mental health in football is actually a problem. There was a guy last year, a young boy, 18, who killed himself because he didn't get a contract, played for Man City. So it's like it's like a it's actually a touching touching subject, and I feel like there's, there's even like podcasts now like that. Um, People that I know, they run about ex-footballers and stuff like that. And this is where like, I spent like all of my teenage years moving into that, like, I would say, maybe like until I was like 20, 21. And I think the next day I got nicked for attempted murder times two. I remember when they, um, they came to my house, um, it was late in the night. And I remember like they kicked off my door, like I think it was like 1am and like, I, I think I was still half asleep, but then I remember my brother trying to move around in the house, my older brother trying to move around in the house. And then um, there was actually armed police and, and I saw like a red laser um, being pointed and they told everybody to come out the rooms. And I remember like from my room just seeing a red dot because my room was opposite my mum's. I remember seeing a red dot on my mum. The Trident officer saying that you're looking at 25. Um, you're looking at 25, but where I'm from, like, there's only one thing that we say in the in the police station, and that's no comment. No, scums was really scums was a beer, bro. Like niggas know with it, you get it. It's not a pretend. Like niggas know with it, the streets know. So everyone knows it, you get it. It's not a lie. At the time, sorry, I felt like if you're not playing football, if you're not um, a musician, the, you're gonna hit the roads. There's and there's no way out, and that. That, and as, as crazy as that sounds, because I, like I said, I went to a good school, that's what I was, my life was reverting to. No, like, I didn't have no interest in, of, of rapping and that. I felt like um, the reason why I was so anti and the reason why I was um, committing all those crimes was because what was done to me. But I don't think a lot of people realise that when I was stabbed, it, it changed my whole mindset. So I thought, you know what, anyone can go, like I'll do whatever. So I didn't even want to rap. But um, because like, I, I wanted to find another way to actually express myself um, more than words. I'm in Pharaoh God, can't only fake God, then that's my mother's. They want me to put another body on my mask, but success is my new repercussion. I got hitters around me, they go when I say it, and I'm discussion. We're here now, innit? You know what I mean? So it was a good change to see like him actually grow and and have that substance about him, innit? You get me? He's not fickle and torn away by the streets and. Even though that's where we're from, like, you get me? We could see the detachment from it and his optimism and becoming someone successful. This is where we are today, Limitless. You see, mm. our first goal with Limitless is to just create platforms for others and to make sure that they have a voice. Because I believe that there's a lot of people that ain't got a voice but has a story to tell. 
yeah bro it's just different now bro as i said it's different now man talk about businesses talk about how we can better our lives like talk about getting out of the end man don't even talk about the ends no more don't even come to the ends like it's not it's bigger now really just show man it's a whole bigger thing